Let's turn to Gregory McGarrian, a law professor at Washington University in St. Louis, Missouri. Greg, thanks for being on the program with us. What a day it is here in Washington. Uh, Donald Trump slated to become the first president to be impeached not once but twice. What are the implications beyond, of course, the obvious stain, or I should say another stain, on his presidency? I think the most important reason behind this impeachment is that the members in the House are concerned not just about Trump's wrongdoing, but about the radicalization of his followers, uh, as we saw last week. And so I think this impeachment is an effort uh, to send a broader message that the leadership of the nation rejects that kind of behavior and that extremist ideology. If Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell votes in favor of convicting him in the Senate, what would that mean? How significant would it be? And could it happen while Trump is still in office? It is almost impossible for it to happen while Trump is still in office. The Senate is not set to reconvene until uh, next Tuesday, the 19th, the day before the inauguration. And an impeachment trial, uh, in theory, could be completed in one day, but it's almost inconceivable that the Senate would proceed in a way that, that was that, uh, that rapid. So what we're likely to see, uh, I think we're still most likely to see the Senate not vote to convict Trump. But if they were to vote to convict him after the fact, my understanding is that there would then be separate votes on uh, whether to take particular measures that the Constitution permits. And the two big ones would be prohibiting him from ever seeking office again and uh, denying him the uh, perks and benefits that ex-presidents are ordinarily entitled to. And how significant is it that the Senate Majority Leader, Mitch McConnell, who had been one of uh, the staunchest supporters of this president, ha you know, the fact that he's suggesting he might support convicting him? Mitch McConnell is a brilliant political tactician, and I think he has uh, gotten the benefits that he can get out of the Trump presidency. He has seen a great many conservative judges appointed to the bench. He has seen some very important conservative legislation, notably the big tax cut uh, from a few years ago. And I think McConnell now sees Trump as a liability more than an asset. And so McConnell uh, is turning on Trump at the 11th hour. On the House floor, I don't know if you've been uh, listening to it, Greg, or not, but time and time and over again, we've heard the Republicans really uh, uh, talk about the same theme over and over again, talking about how an impeachment would cause damage, it would cause division, and this is a time of healing. And then the Democrats basically saying you can't heal until you hold the President of the United States accountable, someone who incited, was instrumental in inciting those riots. Um, what do you make of those arguments? Who's making a stronger case here? I think the Republican argument is very disingenuous. Uh, it's sort of like the Republicans who have been saying, oh, there's so much skepticism about the election results, when those same Republicans have been the ones creating the skepticism. In this case, the division in the country is represented by this reactionary fringe of domestic terrorists who attack the Capitol. To say that holding people accountable, starting with the President of the United States, for those uh, extreme actions, to say that holding those people accountable is divisive, uh, I think is extremely disingenuous and uh, not at all constructive. I think the Democrats are right. Whatever you think about the proper approach to holding Trump accountable, I think the Democrats are right that in a situation where something this severe has happened, uh, it's essential to hold the people responsible accountable, to send a message that this cannot happen again, we will not tolerate domestic terrorism.